Hi, today I'm gonna show you how to display anything you want using OLED display and a microcontroller. I will tell you about OLED display from zero up to a working project with a code examples and a theory behind. I will be using STM32 Nucleo board to drive the display, but the knowledge you get from this video can be transferred to any other platform, for example Arduino. Also, every component and a website used in this video is in the description. The video is divided into two parts, short theoretical and practical. Enjoy! So before we start coding, it's necessary to say a couple words about a LED matrix structure, its benefits, why you want to use it in your projects. To understand benefits of OLED technology, let's compare it with a well-known LCD. What LCD display has that OLED hasn't? A backlight, polarizers, liquid crystals, color filter. OLED technology doesn't have all this, which makes it simpler and thinner. Also, OLED display doesn't need a backlight, because organic LEDs produce light by themselves. Due to ability to control each pixel individually, OLED displays have perfect black color, perfect contrast ratio and superior power consumption, and due to a thinner structure, wide view angles. And the last but not least, OLED displays can be flexible. Flexible devices aren't popular so far due to their price and mechanical challenges, but in the future, who knows? Now we know something about the OLED structure and its benefits. Let's look at the exact display I have. It has resolution of 128 by 64, which means there are 8192 OLEDs, which needs to be controlled. But how do we control thousands of diets? To control that amount, we need 192 legs of a microcontroller. In such case, we can control it as a matrix. But that's a lot of MCU legs. What if we don't have that much? The answer is the display controller that allows to reduce microcontroller pins needed to control the display to only 4. In case of this OLED display, it's SSD 1306, which significantly is job for us. But don't worry, most of displays already have such a controller integrated in their structure, and you don't need to buy it. So into words how it works. Display controller receives data from a MCU in series and can output it in parallel, controlling rows and columns of OLED matrix. Of course, serial transmitting requires time and data must be stored somewhere until it can be processed farther. For that purpose, controller has a buffer memory. Basically, it collects bits transferred from MCU until they form a full frame. Then this frame can be transmitted to the OLED matrix. So in total, for one frame we need 8192 bits in the buffer memory, or one bit per pixel. To have a refresh rate of 24 frames per second, you need to transfer 8192 bits 24 times per second which is around 200 kilobits per second. Communication between microcontroller and display established via the I2C interface. It's serial synchronous interface. Because it's serial interface, it's cheap, simple and requires only 4 wires. But from the drawbacks, it's slow. Here's connection scheme between display and nuclear board. Serial data, serial clock, power supply and the ground. If you have the same OLED display I have, it already has up resistors and protection against reverse polarity on power pins, so you don't need to bother having them on a breadboard. Just connect everything with the four wires and you're ready to program. So that's actually all I wanted to say about the theory and now we can start practice part. To write a program I will be using STM32 Cube IDE. Don't worry, that's a free software, you can download it from a official website without the problems. So first of all we need to create a new project. Press File, New, STM32 Project. In the window that pops up, click Board Selector tab and choose board you are using. I have Nucleo L152RE, so I select it. Next, write a name of the project and change nothing more in here. Initialize all peripherals with their default modes. Yes, please. For the first time, it might take time, cause it downloads all the libraries and stuff it needs to create a project. And here is the MCU that my development board has, with all the pins and their connections. Grey means nothing connected to them, and green and yellow are used for something. Now we need to set up two pins of MCU to be able to communicate with a display controller using I2C. That's pretty easy. All we need to do is in Categories click Connectivity, I2C 1. This MCU can have two I2C interfaces, we select first one. Because we'll be transferring images at 24 frames per second, we need more than 100 kHz clock. You remember? We calculated that we need approximately 200 kilobits per second. So we select here a fast mode. These are all settings we need to do here. Now press Ctrl plus save. Do you want to generate code? Yes, please. And now we have our project. ID generated all necessary header and C files for us to the MCU and I2C interface. Just like that in a blink of an eye. 
If you try to do the same manually, it would take eternity. In main C file, you see all the includes files, init functions, pin setup, etc. So basically, IDE created a template for us with a minimal functionality that we will use now. So what do we do now with that? We can waste hours of our lives writing tons of functions to communicate with the display. Or we can use ready-made libraries that we download from the GitHub and save time. I think choice is obvious. I will use library for a STM32, but you can Google and find same libraries for Arduino platform. Again, all links are in the description. Press code, download zip. At this library we are interested in several files. Readme, license, we don't care, examples, no and ssd1306, that is the folder we are interested in. Here is the header and C files, all they must be included in the project. Go to the STM cube IDE and at the project explorer click core and click inc and src. We need to copy all libraries files in here. So go back to files location and while holding ctrl select all C files. Press ctrl C, click on src folder in project explorer and press ctrl plus V. Here we go. Do the same with the header files, copy and paste them. Now we need to build the project to check if everything works. Click project, build all. And yes, yeah, always we have some errors. At the project explorer we see the files which causes the problems. Let's open and look at them. Here we go. Fonts file includes ssd1306conf.h file, but from the library we copied conf template. To fix this, open conf template file by double clicking on it. So this conf file is designed for different STM32 MCUs. Here you can find lines that define different families of STM32. Currently F0 is selected, but nuclear board I have uses another one. So we need to change this a little bit. We command by double slash F0 version and uncomment which one we use. To find out which MCU your board uses, look at the specification or look at the ink files names in the project explorer. Here I can see that I have STM32 L1. So I need to uncomment STM32L1. Additionally, there are some lines about communication possibilities like I2C or SPI interface. We use I2C1, so change nothing in here. What we need to do at last is to right click on the templates file and rename it to ssd1306conf.h without template word. Now we again press project build all. And here we go, zero errors, zero warnings. Beautiful. Now we are ready to display something. We will be writing code in the main C file. So first of all we need to include some header files. Right below it there is a command that says user code begin includes and code end includes. We need to write include ssd1306.h just between these two commands. Now we need to initialize display controller by writing ssd1306 underscore init and close the brackets. We need to put it after i2c1 in it. After that press project build all to check if we did everything right. Now to display something there is a file called ssd1306 underscore test.c. We open it by double clicking and scroll down to look for a function that we can use to check the display. There is a function called test all, which basically tests all other functions in this file. For now we're gonna use this function. It includes different functions like test draw bitmap, polyline, arc, circle, rectangle, like basically everything this file has. So just copy the name of the function, then go to main.c file and paste it into the while function between the commands. Press Ctrl plus save to save everything, then again project build all. Zero errors, but one warning. Oh yeah, that's because we haven't included test.h file. Just copy the name of a test header file and include it as we did earlier and try again. Project build all. Yeah, zero errors, zero warnings. Great. Finally, we can connect development board with the display to the computer. Every time I connect a nuclear board to the computer, window pops up with a link for a this exact board specification. Here I can find full description of the board with connections and different stuff. We need four wires to connect display to the board. Power, ground, SDA, data and SCL, clock. To find out where are they on the board, we can simply go back to STM cube IDE to IOC file and look at the pins of MCU. It's written that I2C SDA is a pin PB7 and PB6 is SCL. Now go back to the website and look where are those PB6 and PB7. Connect them accordingly to your board. So we have the board and display connected, we have board connected to the laptop, only one thing left to program the board. 
So to program the MCU, click on the arrow near green bug, then the bug configuration, double click on STM32 Cortex C slash C++ application, go to the bugger tab, ST link and press scan. Serial number must appear. Now click apply and debug. If you have any warnings, errors or something doesn't work at this stage, watch my previous video where I show you what might cause the problem and how to fix it. Also I tell other things about STM32 ID and how to use buttons for example. Ok, in our case everything works fine. Diet at the board starts blinking. The only thing left is to click resume. And here we go, MCU displays everything what was in the test function. Letters, figures and pictures. You can display these pictures individually, you can shift text and pictures, rotate them, basically everything. But what I want to show you is how to display any picture you want at animated, for example how to display a GIF. Let's say I want to display a Nyan cat. I simply google Nyan cat GIF 128 by 64 resolution and pick first picture. 320 by 240 pixels. Uh, that's actually too much for our display, but there are some blue background and we can easily crop it and save it anywhere you want. Basically GIF consists of several images that change each other at a certain time and this creates a moving effect. So first of all we need to split our GIF into these images. To split the GIF into frames we can use an online service. At the same website we can fix the resolution to make it 128 by 64. How to do it? First of all crop the GIF to the size you want to. I think I will crop most of the background so the cat takes almost all the frame, like that. And press crop image. Now press resize, width 128, height 64. And here we go, crop it and resize for our display image. Now download it, finally we can split it to frames. Upload crop it and resize image again and press split. As you can see this particular GIF consists of 12 frames. Download all of them somewhere and extract. Because we have a monochrome display which can display only blue color and black of course when OLED is off, we need to convert this image into a black and white, so we can display them without errors. There are two ways to do it. First one is using graphic editor. I will be using Photoshop cause I just have it on my PC. So open Photoshop, press create new with 128 64 press alt and scroll wheel to zoom it and simply drag the first NyanCat frame to the Photoshop. Then select layer in the layers menu, press select, color range, at select menu choose shadow and here you need to shift fuzziness to zero cause in case of non-zero value we will have grey colors which we don't need. And here you need to play with the color range to find the picture that you think looks the best. Maybe you want a skinny, ugly or a fat cat, who knows. I think for me 90 is fine. So press ok. Now press ctrl plus j to create a new layer from selected. Delete previous layer and change the background to black. To do so click on the background in layers menu, press here, solid color and black. Click again on the layer we just created and press ctrl plus U. And drag lightness to maximum. So now we have a white cat on a black background. Now press file, export, quick export as PNG, save it as a zero frame. And here is the fun part. You need to do it with every frame you got. So again, color range, change parameters, ctrl plus J, delete old one, ctrl plus U, lightness to maximum. File, quick export as PNG. I'm gonna speed up the process so you don't wait till I make these 12 frames. Also, what is the benefits of using a graphic reductor? Because you can draw anything you want to display in here, any picture, any font, anything your imagination comes with. Now we need to convert our images into a dataset for a microcontroller. For that we go to a image to CPP service. So simply select all frames of our image, open, 128 by 64 for all them, background color, black. And here is a second method. Actually you can put here colored images we got after GIF splitting and don't use the Photoshop. It will automatically convert them into black and white images but sometimes it terribly distorts the pictures. And also you cannot draw or change anything in here like you can do it in a photoshop. So the photoshop is more universal thing in which you can modify everything. But the website is faster. So maybe try without the photoshop, look at preview and if it's good don't waste your time on doing it manually. So at the output, let it be Arduino code and press generate code. As you can see it generated datasets automatically for all frames. 
copy all of them. And where do we put them now? Go back to stm 32 cube IDE to test.c file and paste it here. We need to change it a little bit by deleting prog mem word in each array. And I want to say several words about these datasets and how to understand them. If you simply count the number of elements of the array, you will have 64 rows and 16 columns, which gives us 124 elements. Each element contains 8 bits, so 1024 elements with 8 bits each gives us 8192 bits. And yeah, that's 1 bit per 1 OLED. So this dataset is nothing else than the state of individual OLEDs that must be turned on or off. Ok, now check everything, project, build all, zero errors, zero warnings. Nice! Now we can finally display it. Go to the test draw bitmap function, delete everything except fill, draw bitmap and update screen function. At the fill function write black, cause we created a black background behind the Nyan cat. Here we want to draw a cat with white, so write white. Here is the resolution of the image we want to display with this function, don't change it. 0, 0 is a starting coordinates, don't change them either. Um, so all we need to change is a dataset. Delete dataset that was here and paste name of Nyanke dataset. And also the update screen function to display the image. Now when we use test draw bitmap function in the main.c file, we must see first frame of the GIF on the display. So let's try it. Press project, build all. Now just press run button and wait a little bit. And here we go. Cat is on the display, but we haven't finished yet, we want to animate it now. Remember, GIF are just images that follow each other. So basically what we need to do is to change the first frame with the second, and second by third, and so on. So how do we do it? Let's go back to the test draw bitmap function. Images must follow one another with some delay that match 24 frames per second. So we copy the hull delay function, which delays program for milliseconds specified in a brackets. We want to have 24 frames per second. That means that we need approximately 40 milliseconds delay between each frame. So write 40 in brackets. And then just duplicate these 4 lines for all 12 frames. I know that there are more elegant ways of doing it, but for educational purpose that's enough. Now we change names of frames to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So let's build the project, program MCU and see what we have got. And finally, we got our GIF animation on the display. That's great! So that's how you can display basically everything you want very easily in your projects. Now you can start using OLED displays anywhere you want. Thanks for watching, bye! Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe!